and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm Teresa and I do a lot of um, mixed media and craft projects here on my channel. And for those of you that have been here many times, well, thank you for coming back again today. As you can see, we're set up ready to do some gel printing today. This is my 8 by 10 inch gel plate. The reason that it's yellow is it's stained through using um, alcohol inks on it quite a number of times. The staining is not going to transfer. I clean um, my plate with soap and water. I condition it by using baby oil and that fetches out more um, of the staining. But essentially now it, it, it's yellow. I can't, I can't clean it up any more than that. Most of my plates are stained at this point. But it doesn't affect um, the performance of them. So please don't worry about that. Today I'm going to be doing something um, just a little bit different for me. Again, um, this year I'm determined to use things that have been sort of sat neglected or hoarded or put in that pile of, oh, I'll do something with that later. And one of those products um, is this, which is stone paper, which uh, by the company Stamperia. Now, stone paper is essentially... Um, as it says, it, it, it looks like um, cardboard, like um, paper. I mean, this is it here. To all intents and purposes, it looks like a heavyweight mixed media card. It comes in a huge, um, this, this piece here, it was double the size. So yeah, huge piece this one was. Um, 29.7 by 42 centimeters, 300 GSM. So you can, you can imagine how heavyweight it is. It's made from fibres created from calcium carbonate, hence the name stone paper. You can paint on it, you can stamp on it, you can decoupage on it um, with like rice paper or, or, or napkin, that type of thing. You can use spray paints and things on it. Um, you can sew with it. It's machine washable. It doesn't disintegrate in the wash. It is like super sturdy. You cannot tear it. But you can cut it, you can die cut it, you can punch it. Um, so it sort of falls somewhere between a fabric and a card stock as far as craft projects is concerned. And I thought it would be really nice to use the gel plate to add some colour and interest and pattern to it. And then get the sewing machine out and make some little um, storage pouches. Just because... Otherwise, it's going to sit here for another, I don't know, I've had this at least 12 months, if not more than that, and done nothing with it. So this is the year that I'm doing things. If you go and have a look on Stamperia's website or their YouTube channel, there is a little bit of information. I've not been able to find a huge number of projects and things, to be perfectly honest, not sort of full tutorials. So I thought it might be quite nice just to do something um, with it today, because maybe I'm not the only person who's got some of this that's just sitting around. So, as I said, it, this came in a huge piece. You can get it in smaller pieces. I think it comes in an A4 size as well, which is more manageable if you want it for small things. Obviously, if you wanted to make quite a considerable sized item, um, maybe like a, a tote bag or something like that, you would need this huge size. So it is nice that um, they've thought about the possibilities of what people are going to use it for. Now, I have gone ahead and cut out pieces um, for the projects that I want to make today. There is no reason why you can't sort of cut yourself pieces, print all over it, then cut the pieces out. I just thought um, for the sake of convenience, and I'm trying to film this, and if you've got huge pieces, it, it's very difficult to see what I'm doing. So I've gone ahead and cut out what at first will look like some very sort of random um, pieces. But I'm going to make two little zipper pouches and I'm going to make um, like a little a, a pencil case with a, a magnetic closure as well. And say I've just gone ahead, drawn on it, measured it out with a pencil and a ruler, um, got the scissors out, cut out my shapes. And these are more manageable now for me to print with. I have one long piece, but that's not a problem. You know, I, I, I can manoeuvre that on my plate and get it covered. Um, but... That's that for the for the for the stone paper. As I said, this is my eight by ten inch gel plate. I've got a selection of paints here. Once again, as always, I, ch I generally use the Jaco Art Americanas. I have um, titanium white, cadmium yellow, true red, sour apple, true blue, sea breeze. 
poodle skirt pink and purple cow. Going to be using some, if not all, don't know, any or not. I thought they just, it was just a nice, um, there's a nice bright colourful range there to choose from. A couple of things I've got for mark making. Obviously, I've got my brayer to brayer my paint onto my plate and just some scrap um, copy paper here just to clean my brayer on. I've got a few general bits of junk that I save for print making. Um, these I salvaged um, from the craft store where I actually work. They were in the bottom of boxes that had glue sticks in and it was what the, the glue sticks were fixed in. But I thought they're going to be perfect for print making. So I saved those, brought those home. As always, but a bubble wrap, like the texture of bubble wrap. Um, some corrugated card, again, always good for creating pattern and texture. And I have put, pulled out um, one of my larger stencils. I really like this one um, by, this is by joggles.com, but it's a nice size um, to use if I want a stencil for this larger plate. So I'm going to go ahead and just do some sort of basic printing onto this stone paper. For the most part, I am going to be printing just on one side. But on this very long, this large piece, um, this is going to become like a sort of pencil case type thing. Um, so you can imagine we're going to have room there to pop your pencils in and this flap's going to come over with a magnetic closure. So I'm going to be printing on both sides of this um, so that the inside will also have some colour on it when it's opened up. You don't have to, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that today. But everything else is just going to be printed single-sided. Now, if you don't have stone paper, there is no reason why you cannot print onto fabric. Now, you could use um, acrylic paints mixed with some fabric medium. You can use, obviously, fabric paints. It's something that I may come back and do at some point in the future. I do have um, a couple of canvas bags and that type of thing, so I, I may well do a tutorial at some point. But today's sort of tutorial, there's no reason why you can't cut pattern pieces from some um, like heavyweight cotton or canvas or something like that and follow along with, with today's um, tutorial. I will draw out... Um, the patterns for these and pop them on my blog and I will put a link to that down below so that you can go and, and find the templates and have all the measurements much easier than me sort of reading it out as I go today. But as let's just get on with the printing because th that's the main focus of this tutorial today. So I'm going to begin by popping a bit of paint on I'm going to use the brayer just to spread that about a bit and get a nice even coat. You're calling, I'm falling, don't know what it is you do to me, yeah, where you go, I follow, let's go. Ready 
coat is down on all our pieces we can add some more interest and start, start building some other little layers and uh, just having a bit of fun and playing around with the items that I've got to make some texture so I'm going to be popping some more paint on my plate not bothering too much about what's already on there quite happy to leave that I am just going to be using uh, some white in this as well I think um, I like having white in my printed layers I'm falling don't know what it is you do to me yeah where you go I follow let's go out and dance the night away going like one two three four five six seven eight dance the night away I Break. 
struggle got purpose and we grow So whatever role we have to take next All I need to know is that we'll roll with the punches the gel plate away I've, I've washed that off and sort of cleared my work surface and I'm I'm happy with the printing that we've got on here we've got some nice um, layers a bit of interest some pattern I do want to just like pop out some design um, though uh, this is the piece where I've done inside I've not been too fussed about the inside I say it is the inside of the flap I just wanted there to be some color on there so I'm going to add some details with stamping now I've pulled out this stamp, this is an old one from Visible Image um, which was their Orbital set, this is their old packaging. I'm not entirely sure whether they still do this, they may still do something similar. They had um, these sort of designs but in a smaller format and I think that one might still be on their website. But it is just like a doodly circle and I know there are a few companies that make them. And I want to pop some of this pattern onto my prints but using white paint. So I've got here, this is just like a, a piece of perspex that I've had from somewhere, can't remember. And I find the easiest way if I want to stamp with acrylic paint um, without overpowering the stamp with paint we don't want too much on there is just to brayer out a bit of paint onto this acrylic sheet and then I can dab my stamp in there and then create quite a nice um, impression on my print so I'm just going to randomly just to add a little bit more um, interest to these pieces just like this I'll add more paint onto my um, sheet as I need it a little does go quite a long way though Thing to remember if you're using paint on a stamp as soon as you've finished um, go and wash it off you don't want it drying on there and finally because we've added some um, white detail I want to add some black detail and I've got this stamp here this is um, by All and Create and it's called Marking Time and I'm going to use um, this stamp here um, just to carry on with this sort of circles theme that we've got going on and just to add a little more interest um, with some black just to contrast with the white now you could do exactly the same as we did with the white and use some black acrylic paint but i've got a black archival ink archival ink is really good at stamping on paint and it's waterproof permanent when it's dry so i'm going to use the ink it will stain your clear stamps but it doesn't transfer once it's dried um so don't worry about that i use it it's my go-to black ink to be fair with actually creating the this final stitched projects 
And these two panels here, and, and as I say, I will have the instructions and the pattern on my blog. Um, so these two panels here are going to be the sides for a zippered pouch. And I've got just here um, a six inch zip. This is just a purple nylon dress zip. And it's going to have zip closure at the top and just stitched around the sides. So you may find it useful to sketch on your seam allowance on the back. I've included a one centimetre seam allowance on all the pattern pieces. So I've just measured and, and drawn round here. Now this top piece here is going to be folded over and then top stitched along where this zip closure is. So to begin with, we just need to attach it. I've got my sewing machine here. I've got a zipper foot on it. I can't really angle my camera and the setup that I've got so that you can watch me sewing. So I'm going to stitch this on um, this side and then flip it back and top stitch it. And I'm going to attach the other piece in the exact same way on the other side of my zip. And I'll just be back and show you what that looks like. So there's my zip and my top stitching, not perfectly straight, not the best seamstress, but it will do for me. And obviously that will be the top and, and the closure. So what we need to do now is fold it right sides together, undo your zip a little bit um, to start with, just so that we're going to be able to get in and turn it afterwards. And we're going to stitch down the, the side, across the bottom, and back up the other side again to create the pouch. Now that we've stitched around the, the sides and the base, we just need to clip these corners. So just removing a little bit of excess just gets rid of the bulk when you turn it back the right way around. Now you can also trim um, these seam allowances slightly. I'm going to leave the sides, but I'm going to trim the base one. Obviously, this isn't going to fray. It isn't going to tear. So we can afford to go a little bit closer. So I'm just trimming away a little bit of that excess. I'm just going to finish popping my zip open. That's why you need to leave it open, partly open, so you can get your finger in there. And here's the finished um, little zipper pouch. It just opens up like that and closes again. And as you can see, it, it it's really odd to describe it. It's almost like a faux leather um, finish. It feels very sturdy. And I think it will soften up as it gets um, sort of creased. It'll become more pliable. But there's the first little zipper pouch. Um, I have included the pattern for a slight variation on that and that was the one with the pieces that had got these little squares cut out and this is just going to cause, um, just going to create a flat base on the bottom. So I've begun by sewing my zip in as I did before and this time instead of stitching down the sides and along the bottom, um, we're going to stitch down the sides, miss out this bit here, stitch the bottom, miss this bit out here, stitch the side and then we can sort of squish it like this and stitch and this will give us a flat base. So I'm just going to stitch my three pieces here, but do not stitch these bits shut just yet. Once you've stitched um, the base and the sides, and I've just trimmed these again like I did on the previous one, but I've trimmed the sides as well. Now this is quite stiff, so you might want to just sort of try and soften it slightly. Basically you want to squish those together and stitch across there and the same on the other side fold the open sides um, flat together and stitch across and this will create a little flat base and once that's stitched up you end up with this little flat base on your um, zipper pouch as opposed to just the flat purse like that so it just sort of has it a little bit more open inside. The final thing that I'm making today is a sort of a pencil case. This is going to have um, a magnetic clasp on it. So obviously we've got our large piece here, which is the back, which we've got all the decoration on the outside and a bit on the inner flap. This will be the front piece that will be um, stitched down the sides there. This flap is going to come over 
and have a magnetic clasp on it. And that's why I've got a couple of extra little pieces um, to attach the clasp because the, the clasp has these little legs that it fits on almost like a brad. Just need to get the pliers and flatten it out. So this is going to be stitched onto the front and it'll just hide all this mess and the same will go for the other part of the clasp that'll be on the flap. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to be using a zigzag stitch for this. I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. It's really straightforward. So one part of the clasp is in there now. It's encased in between those two layers. The other one that's on the flap, um, as you can just see, it's it's in there, ready to go. Now I need to zigzag all the way around the edge of this just to neaten it and um, to attach this pocket to the front. And here's the finished little um, pencil case pouch. I really quite like this one. I think this is my favourite out of a lot of them. And to be fair, it was one of the easiest to stitch um, just simply because there's less layers, less bulk. This is quite heavy duty stuff. Um, and especially for this one here, doing these box corners, it's quite heavy on your sewing machine. But this one um, was really nice to do. And I think this would, would make a, a wonderful gift for somebody, you know, a little a crafty friend, buy some pens, pencils, pop them in there. You could personalise, put a little nameplate on the front. That would be really nice. But I hope this has just given you a few ideas of things that you can do with the stone paper with, and with your gel prints. Again, if you haven't got stone paper, you can use um, a canvas or something like that to do a very similar project. I will have a look on Amazon. If I can find links to the stone paper, I will put that in my storefronts down below. And there's links to the paints and gel plates and things like that. Um, you know, if you just want to go and take a look at the products that I've used today. But as always, if you enjoyed this, leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I shall see you again next week. Bye. You're calling, I'm falling